Well, as always, appreciate you guys taking the time, even on a Thanksgiving week, to be here and appreciate you guys working with us on our practice schedule. But um, just want to start off, guys, just so proud of this team, so proud of our seniors, um, our staff. I mean, you talk, and we talked after the game, but just in a week where there was a lot of uncertainty, there was a lot of reasons to not be focused. Um, our players, our staff did a great job focus on, okay, what can we control? What can we control? And I talked to the team last week about two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. They did that. And now we're at the point where yesterday I said, hey, guys, we got one more week. That's all we can control right now. We got one more week. And if we handle business this week on Friday, then we'll be blessed with another one. So, um, but I just, I hats off to our staff, hats off to our players. It was an emotional game for everyone at the end of that game just because of how much this team has been through. Um, and at, at the end of that game, it just it brings tears to my eyes even thinking about it at this point because of how much these players have been through, how much work they put in, how much the staff has, the work they've put in, and to be able to have that moment together. Um, I love these kids dearly. It was just awesome for them to have that. So I'm very proud. I'm obviously, still some things in the game. We're excited to clean up, but proud of our team. Coach, when you go back and look at uh, the Sorry. game, when you go back and look at the game film, uh, the offensive line played maybe one of his best games of the season. In particular, Curran and Randolph on the inside were just creating huge holes to run through. What have you seen out of that unit this year? Man, you talk about a group that imposes their will on a defense. Um, that's our offensive line. And Coach Keen has done a great job with them all year. And not only in the run game, they do a really good job in pass protection as well. But you talk about a group that, I mean, we rush for over 350 yards. You know, we're talking about record-breaking day. Um, two backs that did a great job that Ash and Genty and George Lana get a lot of credit, and they deserve it. But our offensive line, I mean, that's a position where you don't get a lot of praise, but they deserve all of it. Um, a group that shows up to work every day. They were on that field earlier today grinding it out. That's the group they are. And not only on the field, that group leads this team as well because the, you know what you're going to expect from every day. They're going to show up. They're going to be ready to work. And that group um, single-handedly just was able to take over that game and create, to your point, rushing lanes for our backs. And obviously they capitalized in it. But I would be Reminisce to not give a huge shout out to our offensive line, to Coach Keen, to Coach Potter on the run game plan, to Coach Hamden on the full offensive plan in general, because um, it really came together and didn't start out great. That's what I'm really proud of, even our team. You know, we're down 10 0 in the game, but stuck with it. Stuck with it, kept swinging, stuck to the plan, and little by little, it happened for us. And obviously, that big run by George Halani really broke it open for us. And, um, but just so proud of our O line, our offensive staff, and how they were able to get that done. He's a veteran guy. He's played three positions on the line this yeah. year. I mean, is he a guy that you've seen take ownership of that leadership role on that line? Yes, and not only just that line, but our team. And that's the thing, you know, Cade Beresford, yes, he is a big time leader in that offensive line room, but it's not just in that offensive line room. He's a big leader on this team. Ben Dooley, same. And not only, once again, as a true leader, not just in what they're saying, what their actions and how they match that with how they prep, how they train, so they can play at the level they're playing in these games. And we're going to need, obviously, another big time week from them this week. You touched on the nine sacks uh, Saturday night and kind of how you're telling the defense just to play aggressive out there. Watching them on the tape, just what were they doing to, to get to the quarterback? Was it just that aggressiveness or were there better techniques or? Yeah, I mean, once again, so proud of Coach, Ch Coach Shenander, Coach Frazier. I mean, the plan we put together um, was a good one. But it was about our players being on the attack. Like we talked about after the game, I mean, there's multiple times where it's a three-man rush call and a Braxton Feely finds a way to beat a double team to get to the quarterback to create pressure. And there was a lot of other times in that game that maybe it didn't come up into sacks, but we, we were able to create pressure to the quarterback's face and ball thrown away, or he's that quarterback now is looking at the pressure and is not worried about the coverage and what's going on behind him. So from... Just them being on the attack, them executing at a high level. Once again, not perfect. There was a couple third and longs where we did let the quarterback out, which is something that we've really worked on this year. But just proud of our guys who they just stayed in it. They stayed on the attack, and they did it consistently throughout the game. And then when you look at the stats after the game, you're like, yeah, that nine sacks, I can see that. And our guys, and just the group we have, they're, they're more frustrated about maybe the ones that they didn't get than the ones they did. But I'm just so, just so proud of the attack mindset they had. And I really think we can build on it going forward. I think, was that, was that Braxton, Braxton Feely's most disruptive game of his yes, college career? Yes, it 100% was. And once again, not just in the stat line, but I'm talking, there's multiple times where there's a play I can think of where DJ Schramm got a TFL, but Braxton Feely at one point had four blockers on him. 
right? He's not going to get any stat for that in the stat line, but it's a huge part of playing D-line, and that's the sacrificial and humility he plays with. And so him being able to get the production he got, I mean, two forced fumbles, sacks, TFLs, um, he deserves that. But the, a lot of stuff you don't see even to this point, like I said, TFL for DJ Shram, but you don't notice number 90 with four guys on him because he's fighting his tail off for his brothers. That's the humility that he has. And for him to be able to get the production, just um, so proud of him. And just proud of that whole front. Mike Callan, Herbert Gum. I mean, they just they were on the attack. Um, and we knew going into that game how big of a deal it was going to be in some of these fronts because of the space that Utah State used. We'd have to be in some certain fronts that would put more stress on those interior D linemen. And they didn't, they didn't bat an eye. From the start of the week to the end, they knew, Coach, I know this is what my team needs. Uh, I promise you I'm going to get this done. And they did it at a high level. Interior D linemen have kind of been like the, the selfless role most of the season. But yeah. What, but what did allow Braxton to get that, that actual production this time around? First off, just, just the intensity he played with. I mean, he was relentless all night. Um, Coach Chins has done a great job with him growing him throughout the season. But there's multiple plays on film, and I'm thinking of a couple in my mind where, I mean, he's on the, he's, he's on the complete back side of the play on the first force fumble, and he gets off a block, and there is no change of speed. There's no, oh, I wonder if someone's going to make the tackle. It is a 40-yard dash. That ball cuts back, and boom, he, he hits that ball. That ball is on the ground, and that's the mentality he played with throughout the game. And that's the mentality the majority of our guys played with throughout the game. So it was not perfect. You know, we were down 10-0. There's still some plays that we didn't fit right. But when you play relentless, you play together, um, good things are going to happen. That doesn't always mean that the score is going to be what it was on Saturday. But more times than not, you're going to be able to continue to stay in games and be on the attack. And from that, creates sacks, creates takeaways, which is a huge part of playing defense. Everything that's happened this season, Spencer, I mean, for you guys still being the Mountain West race, like, what's that kind of say? Did you ever think it was going to be possible with all the ups and downs? And what's it feeling to kind of, you know, be on the verge of maybe playing for Mountain West title? No, I mean, it's, it's – it, that's the beautiful part about college football. You know, every week is a new week. And especially like we've talked about, even prior to the New Mexico game, no one really knew that, okay, there would even be this chance. But we were just focused on we're going to finish this for our seniors, we're going to finish this together. And then obviously a week goes by, and now all of a sudden you're, you're pretty much win this game on Friday, and you get a shot to go play in the championship game. And that was just the message to our team yesterday in our team meeting is um, we still have got a, such an amazing chance 2023 football is not like our story hasn't been written yet. It's not finished. This group of seniors, th there's not going to be an asterisk by their name or that's the, that's the year that they went through this. Their head coach got let go, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, there's still time for this group of seniors who have done so much for this place to write their story. And what that exactly looks like, no one knows at this point. But it's just in this game of football, just giving yourself an opportunity week 12 of the season to play in a championship game, that's all you could ask for. And that's what, that's what my talk to the team was yesterday. That's all we wanted was an opportunity. We got one. It's Friday at 2 o'clock with all the marbles, same for Air Force, and we can't wait. I know you guys had a pretty short flight back from Utah, but was there any scoreboard watching? Did, you guys, did someone have the game on on their phone or something? <laughs> oh, yeah, there was. Oh, yeah, there was. We... We landed back in Boise, and uh, everybody pulled their phones out. It was uh, – and no one really moved from after we landed because I think it was like four or five minutes left in the game, and we definitely stayed there and checked the score of that game. But that's – I mean, it's college football. You never – every week's a new week. It doesn't matter what you're ranked. Are you playing at home? What have you done to that point? It's a new week, and, um, and so we definitely were watching that Fresno-New uh, Mexico game. I promise you that. What allowed this team to keep the belief? Like, what's it about this team that – you know, just kept believing after everything. You know? We got a great group of seniors. We got a great group of kids. And this group believes in each other. And they love each other. And that, once again, doesn't mean it's perfect, but they love each other. They love practicing for each other. And that is the biggest part. Things have not always gone our way this year. But this past week, be, um, going through it with them, there was not one hesitation on practice, work, yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of uncertainty for coaches and players and what's next, what's happening. But our guys didn't bat an eye. And that's why, I mean, it's, it's all them. Like, hats off to them and how they operated last week, how they were yesterday. I mean, it's a short week. We got back at midnight on Saturday. We had practice today on Monday. And once again, same thing. Our guys brought the juice. They brought the energy um, because they love each other. They care about each other. And they're doing it with a smile on their face. And we got a coach and staff that loves their players as well. And I think that together doesn't mean that everything's ever going to be perfect. But I believe when you put your head down and work and you do it for the guy next to you, good things happen. How impressive 
has, has Ahmed been with his journey to get here? And then just the production, his rise he's had this season, a sack in the last seven games. He, he deserves all the recognition he's getting. Because even early on in the, season, in the season, excuse me, when he maybe wasn't getting some of the production he is now, Ahmed was still a violent force for our defense. Um, once again, playing the run consistently, taking on double teams, maybe not getting to the quarterback, but still creating pressure to the quarterback. And so now, as he's worked his tail off week in and week out, him to continue to get some of this production, especially early on, and, and I don't know where he ranks in sacks, but he's getting up there. He deserves every bit of it because he's a guy that is humble and hungry. He loves his teammates. And the only thing Ahmed wants is what's best for his teammates. And that's uncommon in, in college football is all he wants to do is, Coach, I want to do my job for my brothers next to me. I want to do it for the staff. And he literally will say that, like, Coach, whatever you need, I'm your guy. And so him can, to be able to get the production he's gotten recently, he deserves it. He deserves every bit of it. And I'm excited for him to continue to grow and, and even be better because the sky's the limit for that young man chance to catch up with his brother Corey. I know you guys played together back in the day. We, we, we talked a couple weeks ago. We'll kind of text back and forth throughout the season, um, especially with Corey having moved out here. I mean, you talk about a great, uh, just, just a great overall person that loves his brother, um, loves football, and is just a great influence in his life. And he's impacted me, even when we played together in college to now, he's a huge impact in my life. Um, and so I know he, he, he's fired up. He, we, we text a little bit after the game, just, just being able to live that moment because he's a part of this too. That's the thing. This isn't just about the players or the coaches. It's also about this community. This community loves their football team. And I go back to New Mexico. We're four and five. We're on the blue. That place was packed out because this place loves their football team. They love their, they love this, they love their team. They love these kids. No dim for us. And so that's the part of it that, um, just endears you to this place. And I know it does for our players too, where especially this Friday at two o'clock, we're playing the blue. It's different when you play in the blue. We're playing at home, we're playing in front of our family, not just a group of fans, we're playing in front of our family and, and it matters to us. Kind of an odd question, but I mean, are you gonna worry about margin of victory with the computer rankings and all that stuff? Is that something that could come into play? You know, because depending on what happens Saturday, I mean, anything could help, you know. We, our number one focus, win the football game. I mean, if it's by half a point, We'll figure it out. You know what I mean? That's just, at the end of the day, um, just like we've done to get to this point, it's all about one week at a time, one day at a time. And to the same point that we had yesterday, it's like, guys, two weeks ago I asked for two weeks, or excuse me, a week ago I asked for two weeks. Now I'm asking for one more. And whatever happens Friday at this game, we'll cross whatever bridge is waiting for us at the end of it. And at this point, that's what we got. Same for the coaches. Guys, let's have our best Monday. And tomorrow, when we wake up, let's have a smile on our faces, have our best Tuesday, and we'll let the rest of it take care of itself. We just, our focus is Air Force. We know who they are. We've played them. We know how well coached they are on all facets. I mean, prior to them um, getting beat by Army and Hawaii, I mean, they were one of the top football teams in the entire country. And they've been banged up. We know they're going to get their guys back for our game, so we know the test at hand. And our, our goal is to go play together and play fast, going to play smart, and find a way to win the football game. Right now you're, you're serving as interim head coach, you're the defensive coordinator, and you're also a position coach. Um, what was the biggest, I don't know, I mean, it went pretty good, obviously, but what was the biggest challenge of wearing all those hats on game day? Because obviously you got a lot to worry about as a head coach, yeah. but you also got to call all the plays from the sideline for the defense. Mm -hmm. So what was the biggest challenge there, or, or what went well about it, I guess? Yeah. Either way you want to respond to that. I mean, first off, just hats off to our defensive staff because even going into the week, a huge emphasis for me is like, guys, I need to be around our players. I, I cannot be stuck in the film room going through a ton of stuff. I have to to make sure I have a, a lot of awareness of what this thing is, but them laying the groundwork, ideas on calls, how to use situations, put our players, and they did a phenomenal job. So, And then I, I'd meet with them, hey, what do we like? What do we not like? And they did a great job with that throughout the whole week. And so in game, going through it, um, we just, we operated great together. It wasn't perfect, but great conversations. Hey guys, I'm thinking this on this D and D thinking of coming back to this. Yeah, Spence, I think this is good. And just working together was what I was so proud of our staff was again, wasn't perfect, but working together was everything. Cause I told them, I was like, guys, once that defense comes off, I'm going to have a couple words for you guys to hit them on. But then I'm going to go find these offensive guys. And I don't know some of these plays we're running, but I'm going to go bring some juice, build some confidence. Cause that matters to me. And I want our guys on all three phases, when they walk on that field, they know that their coach loves them and they has full confidence in them to go cut it loose. 
know, whether it be today, tomorrow, whenever, in your career in the future, an interim you know, tag is removed or whatever, and you're, as a head coach, is your, what, what is your philosophy? Is it, is it to delegate to your assistants and let them do their thing? I mean, micromanaging, yeah. how, how do you kind of view that? Yeah, for me, Jay, and that, I'm not saying this is right, wrong, or indifferent. I, knowing myself, being the head coach, I would hire a really good defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, and obviously give them parameters of, of what I desire and what I feel called in regards to these schemes, and then let them go do it. Hire good coaches. Trust them. Empower them. Build confidence in them. Build confidence in the players. Build confidence in the staff, and let them go do their job. And then when things need to get ch uh, changed or something's maybe that you don't like, have a conversation. Let's work to get it fixed because it's all about the players you coach and not only the scheme you're teaching them. At the end of the day, you're also you're teaching them about life. And at some point, I'm going to stand before the good Lord, and I'm going to answer for all the players that I've been past. And I think about that. I tell our kids all the time, like, there's a scripture verse, to whom much is given, much is required. I think about that. Because all these kids, it's not about now, 20 years from now, how, how they are as a dad, how they are as a father, how they are in this community. Like, at the end of the day, that's why I do this. And so football is a phenomenal vehicle to teach you how to work hard, fail, learn from it, grow, keep pushing. And so as a head coach, that would be my number one goal is putting great mentors in these young men's life. Obviously, to get here, you've got to be great at what you do clear and concise communicator, on point with the schemes. But at the end of the day, you've got to love these kids, and that's got to be the number one reason you do this. Or me and you just won't work, because that's, that's all it is for me. So we made some changes last week, uh, Spence. Uh, guys have more time to recover. Guys have more time with their family. You even changed the seating arrangements on the plane. What, what specifically led you to make those changes? I think just the biggest thing, guys, is the focus was for our guys to play fast. So they need to be fresh. We need to get them their sleep. We need to get recovery. And I wanted those guys, I wanted to make sure that when our guys came back in the mornings to practice, to lift, to go to meetings, that they were fired up to be here. Because obviously, a lot had happened prior to practice last week. There's a lot of things. Their families were hitting them up, me up. There's just a lot of things pulling at our kids. And so I made it very clear to them, and I met with the leadership group. We looked at the whole schedule and how we can do this together. Because that was my biggest thing, guys. This isn't about me. This is about us. This is us, us being all on the same page and knowing that, hey, if we cut down things, when we do have practice, when we have Indy, when we have these team reps, we're not going to get a lot of them. So we got to be on point with our alignments, our fits, because once it's done, what's done, we're out, we're in recovery. Um, and so every rep you get, you know it matters. And so, and then when you come back the next day, come in here with a smile on your face. That's the biggest thing. When you come in here, be excited. Your coach will be excited to see you. And then whatever we didn't do well the next day, we'll get it fixed. Um, with, with the point of emphasis being playing fast and playing together. And that was the biggest part. And honestly, I got to give a sh uh, shout out to Charlotte. She's the one that brought up um, the players, players changing their seats in the plane. And she came up to me and was like, what are your thoughts on the players uh, sitting in the front of the, uh, front of the plane? And I said, absolutely. Because once again, it ain't about us. It's about our kids. And I think that's, is it a huge deal? Maybe not. At the end of the day, we're all still getting the same place. But I just want our guys to know that's how we see you. you it's all about you. And I think it mattered to him. Senior night, a couple of seniors, I mean, George and DJ, what can you say about those two and what they've both have kind of been through trying, you know, senior years with, with injuries and stuff. What can you say about those two and talk about each of them and what they've meant to the program? Yeah, I mean, starting out with DJ Schramm, I mean, you guys, the words can't describe my thoughts on DJ. You know, I mean, you talk about there is a play in the game where he gets hit on his, on his shoulder that he's, he's working through, that he's fighting through. And he doesn't take himself out. I, didn't, I obviously didn't see it in the game. And the next play, he's able to make a sack on a third down with, with essentially one arm, right? That's DJ. Doesn't ask for any recognition for it. Um, not, like he's just, he is that young man. And his best life is in front of him when he leaves Boise State because he's going to be a world changer, whatever God has for him. And that's what he's given to me. He impacts me every single day. He impacts his teammates every single day. And so with his time coming to a close here at Boise State, he's leaving this place way better than he found it. And that, as a senior and as a young man like DJ Schramm, um, he, he has the respect of this entire building and this entire community forever, and he deserves it because of what he's done when no one's looking. What he's doing when 
maybe people don't even know his name three years ago. He's still working. He's treating people right. He's taking care of his teammates. And so it will be extremely emotional for me with all these seniors because the beautiful part of being here for the time I have, I remember recruiting all these guys, offense or defense. I remember them on official visits, being there for them, seeing their families when they're still trying to figure out life. And we still, it's, and then to this point, like we talked about Ben Dooley, like I remember when Ben Dooley was here at a football camp on the blue, um, you know, working his tail off to get a scholarship, you know, and now he's a senior. So you just, you look at these guys, George Halani, another one, you know, coming out of St. John Bosco had, you know, a lot of different opportunities to go different places. And I'll never forget when he called and said, I'm coming to Boise State. And we're all like, awesome. Like, like well, let's go. But he's just, he's that young man that he knew this was the place for him. And regardless of the authors, the other offers he had, he's like, that's home for me. And obviously, the rest speaks for itself. His true freshman year, he's one of the leading rushers in our conference. And once again, a guy that's humble and hungry, comes to work. He's going into his senior year with all the accolades in the world. He gets banged up, misses half the season. Um, still working his tail off, supporting his teammates, still watching extra film with the running backs, even all the well knowing he's not playing in that game. And he just works his tail off, keeps his head down. And him to come back, do what he's doing right now, um, he deserves every bit of it. And that's just who he is as a person. So, And that's just to talk about a couple. And that's the part about these kids, guys, that um, we could all go hang out at a coffee shop and we could talk, because that's just who these guys are. Like they've, they've put so much into this place, and they deserve all of it. Senior day, how, how will it play out? How many guys are going to walk? I mean, I know with these, the COVID seniors mm -hmm. and guys potentially with eligibility down the yep. road, uh, do, you, do you know how it's going to play out yet? And yeah, what, so. And what, what will your role be on yeah. senior day? Uh, good question, Jay. I'm still kind of working through I know I'm going to be out there with the guys. Um, but for how we've handled it to this point is if you're unsure, we're going to go handle senior night. Because the last thing we would ever want is if you, if you, if you have the extra COVID year, um, and you're not sure what you're going to do, let's do senior night the right way. You deserve that memory. You deserve that memory with your family. You deserve that memory with your teammates. Um, but there will be a couple guys that I'm sure will meet with us this week. That like, Coach, I'm for sure coming back. Um, and then at that point, we, we won't have them have to do it. So we're going to work through that as a staff just to figure out exactly who it is. And, and if it's everybody, then we might just make it a blanket rule. Like, hey, if you're a senior, we're all doing it. And if you come back, we'll do it twice. And we'll have fun doing it twice. But at that point, we're just going to make sure it's, it's really about them. Uh, I know we talked a lot about Ty Benefield this year. I feel like he was a kid early on in the season with just getting an opportunity. And now it's just like, I mean, what he, what he did on the field against Utah State was, I mean, he's, he's a big time player already. 100% is. What did you think of the way he played? Man, thank the world of Ty Benefield. Thank the world of not only who I believe he can be for us on and off the field, but who he is right now. And as a true freshman, I mean, he is that young man. Outside of the physical attributes he has, he's tall, he's fast, he can run. His work ethic and his attention to detail as a true freshman, I haven't seen in a very long time. And I've related his mentality to a Kakala Kaniho in regards to that mentality as a true freshman where you're never satisfied. I got a sack, yeah, but it could have been faster, right? Oh, I covered that guy, yeah, but my eyes, I lost my eyes for a second. That's just who he is. He's relentless. As he's a relentless competitor that always wants to push the envelope. And so he, the sky's the limit for him because he's never going to be satisfied. And for a young man, not only has he taken over leadership of that freshman group, um, he's a guy now the older guys look at him like they trust him. They know the mentality he's going to play with. They know the effort he's going to play with. And even more than that, they know how much work he's put in. And they know he's ready. Uh, the, the rules, we can't talk to him yet. J.L. Skinner often tweets about him, and I, I know, like, I mean, J.L. messages me about the kid. Like, <laughs> yeah. Do you know if they have, like, kind of a, a connection, or, or how cool is it um, that, you know, you have mm -hmm. one of the best That's to awesome. ever do it here supporting a, a yep. future star? I know it's funny, going through Ty's recruitment last year, obviously a big part of what Ty loved to watch was old Agent Zero on the blue flying around because, you know, similar. You know, big, long, obviously jails, 6'4", and all this. But, you know, similar long safeties can make a lot of plays, rangy. And he just fell in, fell in love with the way jail played. So um, I know since Ty's been here, they've kind of created a relationship. They're able to meet and, and connect. And, and it's cool to see our Broncos that are in the NFL. I mean, they pay attention to this play. This is a brotherhood, right? I mean, the amount of texts I get from guys that, have, that I've coached that are here in the NFL, even doing something else in life. Um, 
they pay attention to the Broncos. And that's what I tell our team. Like, once you leave here, guy, it is not done. It's just God's got something next for you. But the connection that our players have with past Broncos is, just, is a huge part of why this place is amazing. It's a family. And so J.L. Skinner with Ty Benefield is just another one to where I'm sure they're going back and forth about games and, and talking about football, but talking about life, talking about, you know, hey, what's it like to be a freshman? Like those are the things that are guys that are either seniors or have already left Boise State and are, and are doing great things in life. They're taking time to impact the young kids here because they know what it's like to be a freshman. They know what it's like to be a sophomore. Kind of the video, you know, on, on Saturday, you know, the team kind of mobs you. You get the Gatorade bath, I think. Like, what did personally Saturday kind of mean to you? That was your first opportunity. What did that kind of personally mean to you? Oh, man. I mean, it's – I was overwhelmed just with our team, with our players, because just know, knowing these young men, knowing what they've been through, this staff, and seeing what they did. And honestly, what overwhelmed me the most was seeing the joy in them. And seeing them put their head down, work their tail off for their brother next to them, and see it go the way it did Saturday. And it, that doesn't mean it's always going to turn into wins. But seeing that moment, seeing their eyes, seeing them loving on each other, seeing the, the coaches operate with them. And it was, I was overwhelmed with, with joy and love for this group because, I mean, and I, like I told you guys on Saturday night, I mean, they, this group's got a piece of my heart that you'll know, never get back. I mean, my family. Um, we adore these young men. And so seeing them play the way they did, finish that game, when they had every reason all week long to start to figure out more about what's next and not what's, what's here and now, and they didn't do that. They did it for each other. And so it's just the emotion of talking to the TV and having them mom. I mean, it's, just, it's overwhelming because of how much I love these kids. And, and in that moment, I was overwhelmed with love and joy because it's just it's all about them. And seeing them that happy was huge. Uh, what did you think of the, the Gator, was Gatorade bath surprising? Oh, yeah. and do, you, do you know the story behind it at all or where the genesis of it or anything like that? I, I do not know the story. It's funny, though. So it's probably maybe a minute before that, Jay. Right, we run the ball, and then they don't call a timeout. So right, we're going to go to victory. And I peek down the sideline to my right, and I see Eric Shenander, and he's just staring right at me, smiling. Tears start to go in his eyes, and I'm like, don't you do it, kids. I'm not crying right now, man. I got I to hold this thing together. And right when I walk away from him, the Gatorade, the Gatorade hit. So, no, I don't, I don't know the, where it comes. Uh, apparently, uh, Jabril Frazier called down. Did he? And made sure he communicated that with Ahmed. <laughs> I'm sure there was something going on b b b between Jabril and uh, Ahmed, because that's, uh, that's not shocking. Make sure I go Gatorade bath Jabril after this year's sec. No, but it's it's that kind of stuff. I mean, once again for this group, like Jabril Fraser, a guy that that had the honor of coaching when he played here, and now he's a coach and he's doing a phenomenal job with our edge players. And just that together for me in the moment, all those emotions of seeing these guys that just in my time here, the moments and how much they have my heart, it was overwhelming for me because of that. Well, to yourself, I saw in the video, you kind of just by yourself. Is it just everything just kind of hitting you? And just, yeah. You know. I mean, th there was that moment there, guys, where I took a knee, and I kid you not, I was like, thank you, Jesus. And I give him all the glory because um, it's all him. It's all him. It's all our players. And so I just I wanted to take a moment and not miss that. I just said, thank you, Jesus. Like, I'm so thankful just for the opportunity to be around these kids, to have an impact. And I, I was overwhelmed, like I said, with joy, love for these kids, and just so thankful. Matt. Oh. That's a, like Matt Wagner uh, played quite a bit for you guys on, on Friday. Oh, yeah. he, has, he hasn't played quite a bit up to this point. Uh, obviously, what, what kind of happened to, to get him on the field? How do you think he did? I think Matt did a great job. I mean, it's cool to be able to see a young man like Matt who comes in the first you know three, four, five weeks of the season primarily on scout team. And so obviously defensively, I'm seeing him every day and I'm seeing him play extremely well. And I'm seeing the looks that he's given us as a tight end are pretty darn close to the same looks we're going to get on Saturday when we're playing an opponent. Um, and him just keep – and you talk about a guy that's awesome to be around, has a smile on his face, can get out there and talk a little smack too with the defense when he's making a catch, just has a good edge about himself and just a great teammate. And so seeing that happen over this season to where now he's able to get in the game and play a ton, um, so fired from that. And you talk about a young man that has a bright future. Um, does a great job in the classroom, does a great job in the community. I mean, such a bright future for Matt.
this is going to take my question, but the other tight end, Matt Louder. Oh, yeah. Um, just, you know, he's kind of been more and more consistent for you guys as the season's yes. gone along. You know, just, you know, two touchdown catches the last game. When he's really feeling it, how dangerous can this offense be? Very dangerous. And once again, the, the awesome thing about Matt is not only is he, is he the – pass catcher that we saw and we've seen throughout all season that can make the big catch, make the big run. But you talk about a guy that imposes his will in run blocking, it's it's all over the place. And Matt Lauder does a phenomenal job with that. And he does – and he takes a lot of pride in it too. Because a lot of times, obviously, everybody wants to catch the touchdown. Everybody want to get, wants to get the ball to score. But – um, Coach Potter's done a phenomenal job with our tight ends to where he's built their mentality to where they're going to have their times to go catch some touchdowns, no doubt. We're going to capitalize on that. But them imposing their will on a defensive line with that offensive line, I mean, you do that consistently, it's going to be really tough for, to stop our offense. Was he the first read on those two, two <coughs> touchdown passes or was Taylor trying to check him down and trying to find who was open? I can't give that away right yeah. now. I mean, <laughs> come on. No, no. It, was, it was a situation with that where it's, it's, it's a two read. We see, we see that look a lot, even defensively. And obviously, that's the primary look. And Taylor, did a, Taylor Green did a great job selling it. it. The offensive line did a great job protecting and capitalizing. Once again, you're talking about winning as a team. The play right before that, Braxton Feely forced a fumble. We recovered it. Our whole offensive staff did a great job dialing up that play. The very next play, touchdown. And that's how you win as a team. Uh, Air Force this week defending the triple option. I mean, I remember back in spring ball, you guys were putting your sets together, getting ready for this game right here. How, how much of a difference does that make, that it's a, a year-round <coughs> to get ready for this offense? Yeah, it's obviously the, a style of offense that you have no way to prepare for if you just did in a week. There's just too much to it. It's too fast. It's too violent. And so we'll spend time in spring ball, time in summer, time in fall camp, just preparing with the fundamentals and techniques for this game, um, especially with a young defense that now, to this point, is not young anymore. We're week 12. But there's only a couple guys on this defense that have played against Air Force. And it's obviously very different from the schemes you see consistently throughout the season. So um, especially on a short week, we want to make sure throughout this year um, we were intentional to build those techniques so that it wasn't a first-time thing. Um, starting today at practice. Now, all the while knowing, I mean, that those first couple snaps you play Air Force, I mean, it's one of the fastest things you'll see. I mean, hats off to their offensive staff. Every single year, they're one of the top offenses in the entire country. And not only are they one of the top offenses, they also have one of the top defenses in the entire country, too. So you talk about just a really well-coached team overall. Um, they do a great job on special teams. They're not going to be penalized. They're going to take care of the football. They're going to play great defense. They're going to run the football on offense, and they're going to take their time to take their shots. And that's a really good football team. And like I said, prior to them getting the injury bug and dropping the last couple games, I mean, that's one of the top football teams in the entire country. And so we know the test that's waiting for us Friday afternoon. We know they'll be ready to roll. They're extremely well coached. And we're going to have our hands full, and our guys are excited for the challenge. But we're very aware of what that is. You guys uh, played three quarterbacks in the game the other day. Uh, I'm just curious, uh, when you guys needed him, Taylor had to go out, Chris, or, uh, Colt went in. What the... What, um... And then obviously CJ, you know, finish it off. But what, what, what is, what's the pecking order there? What's your confidence level on both yeah. those guys? Yeah, I know Coach Hamden had a you know great conversation with all the quarterbacks. Obviously, Taylor Green's our starter. Um, we got full confidence in him. And then CJ, CJ with Colt. You know, he he was very clear with them. These are kind of the plays that you guys are going to have. These are going to be Colt's plays. If I want to use these, Colt, this is going to be your part of the pie. And then CJ, this is you. So really doing a good job keeping that competition high, especially at the end of the day as a quarterback. Um, you have to continue to be on that razor's edge. And I think the world of CJ, and Colt's an older guy that's done a phenomenal job, knows the offense front and back, and so a guy that I know Coach Hamden trusts as well. So in that moment, it was a situation where Bush knew the exact play he wanted to. That was one of Colt's plays, so Colt, let's go do this. While the well knowing we're, we're going to work our tail off to make sure CJ got his reps too. Touched on it a little bit on Saturday night, but what do you think of Taylor's uh, game and just his response? A lot of ups and downs this year, but it looked like he was ready for it. Yeah, I mean, just so proud of who Taylor is, first and foremost, as a teammate. Um, because once again, this season, this whole time hasn't gone exactly the way Taylor wanted it, but he hasn't lost the fact that he's a great teammate. He works his tail off at practice, he's bringing juice. He's working his tail off with Coach Hamden, making sure he's growing and developing. And I'm excited for him to finish this. I'm excited for him to be the guy. I'm excited for him to be with this offense. 
Obviously, he's got a lot of pieces around him. He's got a great offensive line, great tailbacks, tight end. It's not just Taylor, but as a quarterback, you're the leader of that group. They look to you. And him being able to, to see that, know that, and them have confidence in him, that it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. And that's what we talked about last week. I told him, you're not going to be perfect, but I want you to be on the attack and know that we have full confidence in you, man. Your teammates have full confidence in you. Go out there and cut it loose. You have 10 good plays in the row. It doesn't matter. It's still the next one. And it was cool to see him do that Saturday. There's still a lot of things that I know him and our offensive staff, Bush, wants, to, wants him to improve on and grow in. But just so proud of him, no matter what happened this season, he stayed a great teammate, kept showing up, working his tail off, and he's getting better as it goes. And obviously, we're excited to have a big time game Friday. A couple of weeks ago, when George came back, he said, you know, he was trying out some of his moves to see if he actually still had him in, you yeah. know, in this bag of moves or whatever. And now he's back, but you look at Ashton. Ashton didn't really seem. What do you think of the way he played? Because he didn't seem like he missed a beat in terms of coming back from his his injury. Ashton Genty, since the time he got hurt against Wyoming, has been relentless in the training training room to get back. Um, and honestly, the cool part, like him and George want to be able to do this thing together. And that's, and that's the mentality that they, that, that they have together. And he wants to do it for his teammates. And that's the cool part for Ashton is, um, once again, with the success Ashton's had, what he's been able to do on the field, who he is as a person, there's a lot of things pulling at Ashton. But he's been able to look his teammates in the eyes and be like, no, we're finishing this thing together. And... He's worked his tail off to get back last week, even through practice, looking him through Indy to get team reps, and then being able to go out and do what he did on Saturday. And then no different today at practice, seeing him work his tail off to continue to grow and get back to some of the things he was doing early on the season. That's a testament to who he is. And that's a testament to um, how much he loves these, his teammates and how much it's about them. Anything else? Coach, how cold was that Gatorade back? It was chilly. It was a mix between... I want to say like a raspberry and a lemon lime. So it was an interesting flavor that I was walking around with, you know, dripping to my eyes. So it was uh, something I'll never forget. But I appreciate you guys a lot, man. Is that how you envisioned your first kind of head coaching, <laughs> you know, gig going? You know, your first game as head coach going? It's funny. A, a couple of different people have asked me. I really didn't, I really didn't know what to expect. You know, I've been on the field before as, a, as, a, as an assistant, been in the box. And let, but like being able to be back on the field, be the head coach in the field, I just there was a lot of emotions even for me, and I told the staff like, guys, I can promise you this, I'm going to be bringing a lot of juice in the side because that's what I wanted to do for our players. I wanted our guys when they walked on that field, they knew that their coach was behind them, and I wanted them to cut it loose. Um, but I didn't know what, how that was going to go throughout the game, right? Um, I knew it was going to be a lot of things that even now, having that be the first game I did it, um, there's a lot of even things for me from looking at game managers and things. Okay, I, I got to make sure I'm clear with this communication. I can be better because just like anything, you're always trying to continue to grow and be your best. But I, I didn't really have a lot of um, thoughts on exactly what it would go like, but that's why it was just surreal at the end of the game to be able to have those moments with our players, have those moments with some of our coaches, and just seeing the look in their eye and how excited they were, how happy they were, that's what just touched my heart. Those moments, that's what got me, seeing the joy in their eyes of, of what they were able to do. That's what made me so emotional. Yesterday your phone blew up after the game. Did you, did you get like, was there a cool text that you got from somebody, a former coach or somebody in your life? I mean, I was, even after the game with the text messages and people, I, I definitely can't say one because it was still overwhelmed about just the amount of love. Not, and once again, not just for me, but with a, when people watched our team. That's the text that really touched my heart. It wasn't congratulations, you know, to you, Bob. It was the guys that me. Watching that team got me so excited. That's Boise State football. Seeing them play together, seeing them play fast, those are the ones that touched my heart. I mean, all the way from, you know, coach that have been here to players to alumni. I mean, my, I was overwhelmed with joy because of what they saw their brothers doing, what they saw this family do. That's what really touched my heart after the game. Thank you. Spread out in front of the order, stuff here. Well, first off, guys, the, uh, I'm a I'm not a big finish one and then move on to the next. I'm almost like I got more smoothie technique, right? Where I want to get a little bit of everything on one bite. So usually, what that looks like for me is I'm mashed potatoes, cranberries, turkey, ham. Just making sure I'm not missing anything for you guys. Stuff mm, has to be the right stuffing. I'm really kind of picky on that. So it just depends. And then I'm going to go one big swoop and try and get a little bit of all of that in one bite. 
on the attack. <laughs> what, what, what are the Thanksgiving uh, plans for you guys? Are you guys Cathedral of the Rockies? Like what, you guys going to have a big meal together? What, what are you guys planning? Yeah, so we're going to, um, with being that it's the day before the game, we're going to have a quick practice in the morning, and then we're going to do a Thanksgiving dinner for our players, for our families, to where we're all coaches' families, our players are going to all get together, and we'll have a big Thanksgiving dinner. They'll be able to pray, have Pastor Mark Thornton there, and be able to have a meal together. Um, that's the tough part about being the day before a game. Um, but that's our family, too, and that's the biggest thing we talked even going through the schedules. At the end of the day, these players are our family, too. My wife, our girls will be here, and we're going to hang out with our family and have a Thanksgiving meal. So I'm excited. All right. Thank you all. Thanks, Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Thanks, Bill.